The general idea of goods to robot systems is not bad. You take a goods to person system and then you replace some of the stuff with robots to further reduce the labor hours the system requires. Given the labor shortage that we have in many places, this doesn't sound like a bad idea. Actually, it's quite smart. Now, in this video, I will explain why things are not quite as simple and why I do not think that robotic picking will become a common technology in warehouse automation anytime soon. First, let's talk about what a goods to robot system is. Now, if you watch this video, you probably know what a goods to person system is. In a goods to person system, the order toad and the storage toad are both delivered to goods to person picking stations and a picker, a human, picks from the storage toads to the order toads. And because we cut the walking out of the process, I mean, almost all the walking we cut out of the process, the picking rate becomes quite fast. So a picker can easily pick between 300 and 500 order lines per hour. Now in a goods to robot system, we simply, well, simply in air quotes, we simply replace the picker with a robot. And that's the basic idea, right? And piece picking robots, they don't cost a fortune. So for about 100,000 euros, you can get a state-of-the-art piece picking robot. The problem is that you need to have quite a bit more stuff to actually use this robot in a proper way. And that's what this video is mostly about. So let's dive right into this. So what's that stuff that we need and what's the cost? So first and foremost, what you need is an ASRS, right? You need an ASRS, a powerful ASRS, to feed the picking robot. And that's expensive. That's pretty expensive. And that is always going to be the case. And with the pick rates touted by the different robotic vendors, you could basically, yeah, you could dedicate an entire aisle of a single level captive shuttle to each robot. And of course, we can ask how realistic these touted pick rates are, but that's for another video, right? So an entire aisle of shuttles per robot. Well, that's another 1 million euros also, right? Per robot. And then add another 100,000 euros to connect the robot to the shuttle aisle, to connect it to the conveyor loop and to the rest of the system, okay? But there's more cost. But before we can talk about those additional costs, we need to talk about something else. We need to talk about the concept of the order structure. And we need to talk about the order structure because the cost of using the robot and how useful the robot is going to be largely de depends on the order structure. And in case you aren't familiar with the concept of order structure, I recommend you watch the introductory video to my course on order structure that I linked to in the video notes below. Um, so in short, the order structure is the composition of orders in terms of order lines per order and pieces per order line. Okay, so let's try to understand why that is important for robotic picking. Here's the thing. The more order lines we have in one order, the more likely it will be that there is one SKU among these order lines which the robot cannot pick because it is outside its vision or grasping capabilities. And now we have two choices. First, we could simply send every order that contains some order line, which the robot cannot pick, to a manually operated goods to person station. Okay? Now this will always work technically, but it does come at a disadvantage. And the disadvantage is that the robot might end up having nothing to do if every order contains some SKU which it cannot pick. How much sense this makes is really difficult to predict because, well, we can look at historic data, but then again, historic data is not a perfect predictor for future business, and so we might end up planning a system that will never make any sense. The second option is that the robots pick whatever the robots can pick, and then the human pickers pick the rest. But then, of course, it is necessary that these orders are consolidated. For the consolidation, again, we have two options. 
The first option is that we pass unfinished orders from the robotic picking stations to the human-operated picking stations, where we finish them up. But quite frankly, this is a control nightmare, and it introduces significant sequencing and buffering requirements. And unless you know exactly what you're doing, I do not recommend you try this out. And the reason this is complicated is that we now have to synchronize unique, meaning non-virgin order toads, with storage toads at the human-operated picking stations. It also can go wrong in terms of capacity planning, because we do not know in advance how many orders we will need to route this way. The second option is that we pick order lines independently and simultaneously at the robotic picking stations and the human-operated picking stations. And then we send both to a dedicated or to several dedicated consolidation stations, which could also be our packing stations. Now, this makes the planning of um, the packing stations a bit more complicated and it makes the, the, um, the packing station design a bit more expensive. But, well, the control is much simpler. One thing that you also see already is that in the moment you introduce robotic picking, you are not going to have a pick and pack process, but you will have to separate picking from packing in your process. So that is always going to be the case. All right, so in the case of multiple order lines per order, you will need consolidation stations or very extensive conveyors for buffering and sequencing. And in both cases, you will need costly upgrades to your warehouse management system and your warehouse control system. Long story short, Stay away from robotic picking stations if you have multiple order lines per order and at least one SKU in those orders that cannot be picked by a robot. Oh, and there's another cost. It is the cost of teaching the robot how to deal with new products. Because, of course, you cannot assume that you just install a robot and it picks anything or everything. But I'm sure you didn't assume that anyway. It has to be taught how to pick and in the worst case, this can be different for each individual product. Now, robot suppliers sometimes claim, at least some of them do, that their robots can do unsupervised learning. They teach themselves how to pick in their spare time. And, well, there are just two problems with that. Why does your robot have spare time? It probably should not. And second... There are certain characteristics of products which a robot cannot identify on its own. First, why shouldn't the robot have any spare time? Well, if you want your robotic picking system to make financial sense, then you want to run it at least two shifts per day, maybe even three. In any case, you don't want the robot to be idle during normal operations. But let's say you run your system two shifts per day and then you want to use the third shift for learning how to deal with new products. Well, you can certainly do that. However, if anything goes wrong, you want somebody to be there to fix it. Because if there's nobody to fix that, then you run the risk that A, the robot doesn't learn anything because it's standing still, and B, the robot won't be available for his normal work shift in the next morning. The second argument, however, is way more important. Because even if the robot is given time for unsupervised learning, it will never be able to get the full picture. It can certainly take photos of the new products. It can grasp the new items from different sides and angles and put them down again and try again. But there's a couple of things the robot cannot do. It cannot determine autonomously, for instance, if there are certain sides from which not to grasp a product. It cannot know whether it is allowed to place another product on top of that product. Generally speaking, it is not able to understand how sensitive a product is. So I would say there's always going to be a certain amount of human involvement in the teach-in process. And that can be quick if the teach-in process is well designed, but it's more than nothing. So there will always be some cost relate to the teach-in of new products. So let's wrap this up. Picking robots can provide an economic advantage in goods-to-robot picking systems. However, 
that economic advantage is probably much lower than you would expect because the capital expenditure, the upfront cost, is much higher than you would expect and the savings in operating cost, specifically in terms of labor hours, is probably much lower than you would expect. Goods to robot picking is more useful under some circumstances than under others. It can be very useful if the following conditions are met. First, you are planning on deploying a huge ASRS anyway for goods to person picking. Second, the robots can cover base demand. Third, there will always be people around who can do the troubleshooting at the robot anyway. Fourth, there will always be people around who can pick all those items which the robot cannot pick. Fifth, most orders have very few order lines, preferably only one, so that no consolidation is needed. Sixth, you already separate pick and pack anyway. Seventh, your products are insensitive and can be dropped for a faster picking rate. Eighth, your product portfolio doesn't change at all or doesn't change a lot. And finally, all products are in ambient temperature range and are not moist. If you can tick all of these boxes, then a goods to robot picking system can make a lot of sense for you. If any of these boxes remains unticked, however, you should think at least twice. Here's another way to put it. You spend 20 million euros or more on a shuttle system or an auto store. And then you want to replace the guy who cost you 35k per year, who on average picks faster than the robot, who can pick any SKU, who does not have to be taught how to pick a new SKU, who can pick and pack in one go so you don't have to split those processes, who can work in almost any process in the warehouse because he's pretty flexible and versatile and so that makes staffing much easier, who does not need code redundancy or fallback solution in case he needs maintenance or he breaks and you spare yourself all the mess with order consolidation. All in all, with goods to robot systems, it seems like you are probably trying to fix the non-broken part. And that is my main criticism of the concept. I hope this was useful. If you have any feedback or if you want to discuss projects, send me an email. Take care and goodbye.